In this week's Photoshop design tutorial, I'll teach you how to do a simple vintage logo design in Photoshop. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to do this very simple vintage logo design in Photoshop. We're gonna work with one or two text layers again and also some shapes. So yeah, this is again a series of five. This is number three of creating vintage logo designs Yeah, in Photoshop. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, again, I'm gonna start with a new canvas size. That's gonna be super simple, same as before. Going to File, New, and create a complete new canvas size here. Now, if you're new to this, have a look on the channel. There's a tutorial teaching you how to do canvas sizes. If you're completely new or copy paste my settings here, this is just for YouTube size. This is not the ideal big canvas size for a proper logo design. So just bear that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna select under saved here. I'm gonna go for 1920 to 1080. That's gonna be my canvas. And also this time I'm gonna choose a black background here. So we don't have to create one. I'm going to hit create and right away we have black background with also our canvas. Now I'm going to double click on it and just hit enter here. And okay. Yeah. Let me just rename this to black. We've got our first black background. Then second step, I'll drag in my image here so I can have a background image as well. So just from my desktop, drag that in. And right away you will see here it has the right size already. So it really clips to my edges. But uh, for you who don't have that, you can just select the anchor point here, hold shift and then equally expand it and resize it to the size you need it to be. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. And obviously I also took a bit of attention to selecting the right logo that fits the branding here. Okay, sorry, that's from last week. So let's have a look here. That is uh, the tutorial, so it's about a barber shop, a salon, a barber. So I tried to also find an image that goes into the right direction with this logo type. And obviously, it's in Cape Town. There's a salon called, or a salon and barber that is called the Blade, and it is fr coming from the Woodstock elite. So I'm also looking for a pretty cool, in-depth image that drags attention. So, yeah, just bear that in mind if you're selecting an image. You can also. Have a look in the Tronics Design Media Package. It's a $4.99 a month. You get everything that I've created the last three years from all my PSDs, shapes, brushes, uh, textiles, images, everything. Uh, it's a ton in there. It's, it's huge. Anyways, let's go on. So what I'm going to do now is first of all switch the opacity also down to 36 or say like 40, what well, did I say? 32. 32. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to stick with 32 opacity. Select both. And just press Command G and put that together in a group and just rename that to my background. Now, bear in mind, I'm working on a Mac. So if I say Command, uh, Windows users, please press Control. So for Mac, Command G and for Windows, Control G. Okay, great. That's our first step. Second step. Actually, before I go to the second step, what you can also do is here, you can again go to the adjustment layers here and also go to like selective color and tweak it a bit, get a different color effect if you like though. I'm happy with this, so I'm sticking around. Okay, then let's go into the second phase. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is just select um, again a guideline. So let's go to view, new guides. I'm gonna go to horizontal, 50%, okay. Again, new view again, new guide again, and vertically 50%. Okay, this is, if you have seen the other tutorials, that's pretty much what we do every time just to get a feel where my center is of my canvas and for the design. Now I'm going to select T on the keyboard, goes into the text tool. I'm going to make a nice big selection here and first of all, just going to write Cape Town. So that's now a city. Obviously this whole logo is made up and it's not a real shop. So you can also select whatever you need to make your logo stand out and obviously be customized to you. So with Cape Town, I'm gonna go and select the right font. Uh, first of all, it's gonna be Mozart. Also guys, these fonts are all down below in the description. I've linked everything for you guys so you can find them because they're not included in the Tronics Design Media Package because I am not allowed to sell them. These are not owned by me. Okay, let's go to bold. So I'm gonna switch this to bold. I'm also gonna give this a new font size. So 26, then tracking. Where's my tracking? Over here. Characters 200 that's fine with me. If you don't have the character box, please just go to window and select the character box Okay, I'm gonna accept this take the move tool 
If I move this literally a little bit over here, somewhere over here. Okay, happy with that. Now let's go to the next text. I'm just gonna go and select the text tool again, make a small little selection here and write established. Okay, let's also select that font. It's gonna stay actually the Montserrat font and also in bold, but I just don't want it so big. I'm gonna go with like nine or so. Okay, nine and white foreground color. That's also fine, that's exactly what I want. But this time I don't want a tracking of 200. I'm gonna go with tracking 500. So it's just a bit further spaced out. Okay, accept that. And let's move that a bit over. Okay, now I'm not gonna repeat that whole step. I'm just gonna duplicate this layer. So just press Command J again, Windows people, Control J. Okay, and move that slightly over. Double click onto this layer so we can get into the text again. And I'm just gonna give this a year, like 1972 or something. Great. In the middle, I'm gonna leave a bit of space open because obviously I wanna put a shape in there, perhaps a scissor or a razor or yeah, a blade, anything that you have. Eraser, why would one put an eraser? It has nothing to do with that. What I mean is, yeah, basically a scissor or a blade or a knife or whatever you wanna put in there. I'm gonna put a scissor in there. Okay, so leave a bit of space here. I'm gonna make another selection and write what it is. So it is a salon and barber. So let's go like, we'll go with that. Barber, okay, great. Now, what I wanna do is select a different font, a complete different font. Oh, what happened now? Did the whole thing and everything was gone. Great. Okay, let's just type it again, salon. And Barber, I think it is because the picture moved to the canvas. Okay, Salon and Barber, select all of it. I'm gonna go to different font and this time it's gonna be my favorite font, big noodling title, big noodle title, regular. Okay, but the tracking looks quite intense. I'm not gonna stick with that. Also the font size, make it, let's go 13. So here I play a little bit again. So when you guys do these designs, you can also obviously play with the font sizes. So this is really depends on your, on the look and feel of your design. I'm gonna go with like 200 tracking. I always stick between two to 500. Okay, hit enter and I'm happy with that. Select the move tool and move that a little bit over. Now for the final step, what I'm gonna do is again, press V on the keyboard, get into the move tool and I wanna drag down another guideline. So I'm basically just gonna go manually here onto my rulers and drag down a guideline. If you don't have that, make sure to select under view, just the rulers so you have these guidelines. Okay, I'm gonna select one down here, place one over here and I'm gonna take another one, put that roughly over here. Great, then I'm gonna take another guideline from this side and at the end of Cape Town and at the beginning, I'm gonna do a guideline. Great, so these are again, not centered perfectly. Take a bit more time when you space this so it's a bit more centered. You can also use again under view, you can use these new guide kind of measurements here with percentages to place them in a better position. Okay, I'm gonna take the pen tool, P for the pen tool and put an anchor point right here and another one right here. Keep on holding the mouse and I'm just gonna drag it a little bit and try to make a really nice even curve here. So like that, great. Now text tool again and just select the upper side of it and going to write obviously minus, then I'm gonna give this a name, it's gonna be the blade, the blade. Okay, and also at the end, just another minus there with a space bar. Great, let's select the right font for it. I'm gonna go up and select Monster Rut for that too. I'm gonna make this bold as well and a little bit smaller. So let's go a bit about eight, uh, a little bit too small, 10. 10 looks about right for me, great. And now I'm just gonna go right in the front and also just give a few space bar here. And perhaps my tracking should be a little bit more. So let's go instead of 200, I'm gonna go with 500. Great, I like that, okay. Let's just take some spaces away and I'm gonna hit enter here. And right away I can see the blade in the middle, Cape Town. And perhaps I can make this a slightly bigger. So let's go with like 11. That's fine too. Okay, just have to take then one step away. So it's nice and in the middle again. Great, happy with that. Now, what I wanna do is just turn this off. Also go to the pen tool. 
and just forget about my existing path. So I just pressed uh, double escape while I'm in the pen tool again. So that disappears. Now, if we switch, this, switch it on, you can still see here is the original of the blade. And now what I'm gonna do is just do opposite. At the bottom we started, and then we did an anchor point here and here and made a curve to the top. Now I wanna do the opposite to the downside, to the bottom basically. So I'm gonna press on here and one anchor point there and one here and hold again and just do the same thing again. Just this time we're gonna go to the bottom. Okay, go a little bit down, like so. Uh, trying to do my best as possible here and the quickest. Okay, like so. And text tool again, and I'm just gonna, on top of it again, select the text so we can type now inside and not on the outside. And now I'm gonna give this another Woodstock elite name, whatever you wanna write there. Okay, select all of it again. I'm gonna stay with Montserrat font. Um, this time I'm just gonna switch it down a little bit. It's gonna go to like eight and also tracking 500. That's pretty much the same as before. I'm just gonna go right in the front and add a bit of a space bar so this text also moves nice, nice into the center. I'm gonna accept it and move this all the way down to the bottom. Great. And I think to start fresh again, I'm gonna quickly go to view and just say clear the guides. Please, just clear all of that stuff. Then go back to view, new guide again. And I'm just gonna give vertically 50%, yes. And one more time, horizontally also 50%. So we have that again. Great. Okay, now I'm gonna start spacing stuff a bit. I'm also gonna turn on the blade again at the top. So let's select that. Great, we'll fit in there. We have Cape Town, fit that in there. Established and 1972. I'm still gonna leave that quickly. Just gonna take here the Woodstock Elite, move that a little bit up, and Salon and Barber, move that a little bit over. Okay, we can put it a bit closer together like so. Obviously, I'm trying to do this quite quickly. Please, if you guys do this, take a bit more time when you do this. Great, happy with that. Now, last step that I'm still gonna do is just go into my shape library and get out a scissor. So you'll see my shape library is quite empty, but in the Tronics Design Media package, I have over, I think, two or 300, if it's not even more, I think almost 500 different shapes that you can download if you sign into the Tronics Design Media package. And then you can obviously instantly use them and don't need to create this. So very simple, I'm just gonna go over here, custom shape tool, select here the shape, the scissor, okay. And just gonna hold shift on the keyboard. I'm also made sure that my foreground color is switched to white. So I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and just going to create a scissor over here. Okay, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. Like so, great. And it automatically created a new empty shape layer. I can just take this, move it a little bit in, and looking here between the established and 1972, where can that fit in nicely? Also gonna take all of these layers, just hold command on the keyboard, so you can select them all and put that together. Now I'm gonna move everything with the cursors, okay? I'm also gonna go back to view, clear the guides, and just take the last two down here. Salon and Barber, and also Woodstock Elite, and just going to move them up a little bit so it fits a bit in. Okay, and that's basically it, guys. A super easy way to do this. I can also see from my previous design that this has been a little bit more of a curve. So this uh, bottom path here, I curved it a little bit more on the previous design, but it's the same concept as you've seen before. So you can literally just use that method to make it a bit more rounder. Okay, last step I will just do is take all of this stuff, just put it together in a layer text so I can save it for you guys as a downloadable PSD in the media uh, Tronics Design Media Library. And press Command G here again, write the shape, great. Then I'm gonna take shape and text and just the whole thing, move that a little bit up. Great, so guys, that's basically it for this week's tutorial. Super easy, super simple. Have a look down below in the description. Again, uh, all the fonts are linked there for you guys. Also, do give me a thumbs up if you like this content. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of these tutorials. And yeah, don't forget to check out the Tronics Design Media Package. Everything is there for you. So yeah, thanks again, guys, for watching. I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Okay, see ya.